Today we will learn how to color correct, color balance, and color grade the Canon Cinema Elite picture profiles. Let's get started. Step one is to build a list of references. This can take some time if you do have the time to invest. Before starting this project, I did create several looks that will just allow me to quickly right click and apply to our image to get a great starting point. As you can see, in just one click, we're able to get a very quick and easy grade. Now we can move straight to the export settings and be completely done. This is the power of using power grades. If you want to download these power grades, click the link in the description, import them into your project, and then continue to follow along. So let's build this from scratch. Let's try to push this image as far as we can. Let's just begin by creating several nodes, and then we will label them as we go. Step one, we need to balance the shot by adding contrast. 1.1 for the contrast and then 0.5 for the pivot. We'll bring down the highlight by 5% and this is already starting to look amazing. Now that we have added contrast, let's dial up the midtone detail to give the image some depth. Next, we will add some color, 55, and then we'll bring the color boost down by minus 5. Let's continue to balance this shot. Now, let's add some HDR touches. We'll just bring the shadows up by five and the highlights down by five, as well as the light down by five. Gentle does it. That will soften out our image quite a bit. Next, let's dial in our skin tones. Come to our keyer, turn on our magic wand, start dialing in our skin tones. We'll boost the clean black, slightly boost the black clip. We'll turn up the blur radius and then we'll crank the denoise. Next, we'll use our high soft and low soft parameters to further dial in the parts of the image we are impacting. Most of the time, low soft will be able to take care of most of the additional noise. And then the remaining noise you can use the low parameter for. Now we'll add some soft up top. Now, although we are impacting some of the hues around our subject, we're not shifting the image greatly. So these will not matter. Do not worry about these. Next, we'll pull up our vector scope and ever so slightly adjust our hue of our skin after before, we can also turn down the mid-tone detail, which will further soften up the skin. Next, we'll clean up our shadows. This is pretty quick and easy, as you can just navigate the color, presets, and click. You will just have to change the saturation level, because this is a pretty strong effect. Now, as we can see, we're removing the color from our shadows. We can either further refine this by pulling up our curves, coming into the shadows tab, clicking on it, a set point, and then bring the shadows down even more. We have now successfully removed the color from just the darkest parts of the image. Next, let's create a vignette. This will help separate our subject from the background. Soften it out, extend the mask to fit over our entire subject. And then let's turn it, and there we go. Now, all we have to do is track power window. Now that our power window is untracking, we will reset to our hero frame. Now we can pull up our curves, make sure editable splines is turned off, and from the mid-tone section, start to pull down and invert the power window. We have now successfully brought down exposure of everything around our subject. We can also reduce mid-tone detail by 30% as well as sharpness levels by a tiny little bit. 0.53 will do. We have now blurred everything around our subject as well as brought down exposure. This allows us to separate our subject from the background. The next step will be to lift the entire image and bring it to life. So we'll come back into our curves, turn editable splines back on, and click on the top to populate a point, and then slightly to the right until we have gently increased exposure which gives our image just a little bit of pop. Now we can come into our effects and search for film grain. Let's add film grain to the node. Let's change this to 35 millimeter, 400 T. And we'll leave that as is. This will help our image look more like traditional film. And finally, sharpness. We'll come into our sharpness and bring it down to 0.47. Now, if we want to take this one step further, we can take our nodes, move them over, and just after our shadows node, option S to populate a node. And this will be our beauty effect. We'll come into effects, scroll down until we get to face refinement and drag that onto our clip. We'll then move back to the beginning 
of the clip and click analyze. Now you can keep the overlay on as the mask continues to populate by itself, or you can turn it off if you find the image too disturbing. Now, this is not a perfect process. Sometimes you will have to make fine adjustments. However, most of the time DaVinci Resolve does quite well until there is a lot of swift movement. Now, you'll notice that the mask will slightly get off subject and then quickly fix itself. That is okay in this instance because we will not be using most of the time. And that's okay because I will end up cutting the clip right here anyway. So let's get back to our hero frame, turn off our overlay, and now we can continue to beautify the image. This is a strong effect. Be gentle with the direction in which you move the image around. I find 0.2 tends to work quite well for most of the effects. We will brighten up the eyes, add a tiny little bit of light around the eyes, remove some of the bags underneath the eyes, slightly shift the hue of the lips, and then slightly boost saturation of the lip. We'll smooth out some of the forehead, although she doesn't need much. 0.1 should do, and then we'll change our global blend to 0.8. Come back into our node and turn it off and on. You can see a big difference in our subject. We have now removed a couple years from the subject's face. Now, if we need to make any adjustments, we can come to the end, create a global node, and any last minute details we want to make, we can do that. All the image is missing is a tiny bit of contrast, and now we are all set. To push your image even further, create one more node, label accordingly, come to noise reduction, click on frames, change it to three, your threshold to four, de-click the spatial threshold and change that to four as well. If we turn off our grain and then turn off our noise reduction and zoom in, you can see the removal of noise happening up close. If you are still leery about noise reduction because it's difficult to spot, you can also see the difference in your trace information. Now we'll add grain back into the image and right click and grab a still. Now we have a power grade that we can label, which means if we delete all of our changes, we can just right click and apply them directly to our image. Now all that's left to do, delivery tab, click Cinema Pro, this is one of my custom presets. I'll turn off the audio because I do not need it. I will confirm my settings, advanced settings, P3 DCI and gamma rec 709. Feel free to change your color space and your gamma tag to whatever options you wish. These options work best for me, although some else may argue. Once you're ready, we'll click, click browse, click open, come over to file, click custom name, Give your file a name and then click add to render queue. Click render all and you have now completed the grade.